Hi everyone, welcome to HelpYourMath.com. My name is Britannia Rose, and today we're going to be doing addition and subtraction of square roots. So, when we do addition and subtraction of square roots, it is similar to when we do addition and subtraction of polynomials. So if you remember, if you were to have 2x plus 3x, that would give you 5x. You add the coefficient and replace with x. The same concept applies when you do addition and subtraction of radicals, square roots. So if we were to have 5 times the square root of 3 plus 2 times the square root of 3, our answer will give us 7 times the square root of 3. So as you can see here, this expression, both of these expressions have radical 3 in it. This has a radical 3 and this has a radical 3. This has a 5 and this has a 2. So if we go back to the 2x plus 3x, we're adding the coefficients here and we're doing the same thing here. We're only adding 5 and 2. We're not adding the 3s. We're only adding the number that are outside the radical. That's it. So if we were to have let's say the square root of 49 minus the square root of 18. Now when, now here we can see that these two numbers are not the same, but these numbers can be simplified again. So this is the square root of 49. 49 is a perfect square, which we know it is 7 times 7 give us 49, so we know the square root of 49 is 7. That's what it is. Now, 18. 18 is not a perfect square, but it can be reduced. So let's, we're going to redo this as perfect square factor. So we're going to have the square root of 9 times 2, which will give us the reduce of 3 times the square root of 2. Now, as you can see here, these two expressions, there's something different compared to the first one. In this expression here, we don't have a radical 2 behind the 7. Unlike the one on top, you, you have radical 3 in both these expressions, but in this one, radical 2 is only on one expression. So we cannot minus the 3 from the 7. We have to leave it as it is. And that will be our final answer. Now, if we were to have the square root of 200 minus 5 radical 5, again, these two numbers are not the same. But we can simplify 200. So let's simplify 200 in terms of prime factors. So, let's do it on this side. Let's find the prime factors of 200. So we're going to have 200. So we're going to divide this by 2 times 100, then 2 times 50, then 2 times 25, and finally, 5 times 5. So our prime factors of 200 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times 5. So we're going to rewrite this as the prime factors of 200, which will give us 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times 5 minus 5 square root of 5. So as you can see, we have 3 2's and 2 5's. So again, we work with square roots, we do pairs. So we're going to put these in pairs. So we're going to have the square root of 2 times 2 times the square root of 5 times 5 times the square root of 2, which is minus 5 5. Now, as you remember from, from before, you have the same number under the radical. We know that the answer here will just be 
the number. So this is going to be 2 times, same thing applies here, you have 5 times 5, so the square root of 5 times 5 is 5 times the square root of 2, which is minus 5 times the square root of 5. Now we can multiply 2 times 5, which will give us 10 to the square root of 2 minus 5 to the square root of 5. Now here, both of these expressions here have a square root, but they are not the same number under the square root. And because they're not the same number in the square root, we cannot minus their coefficient. So this will be our final answer. Now if we were to have, say, the square root of 72 minus 3 radical 2. Again, these are not the same number, but we can simplify 72. So we're going to do this as perfect square factor. So perfect square of that is a factor of 72 would be 36. 6 times 6 gave us 36. So we're going to do 36 times 2 minus 3 radical 2. Simplify this, it would give us 6 radical 2 minus 3 radical 2. Now, as you can see here, both these expressions have radical 2 beside their number. So we can minus their coefficient. So we can minus 3 from 6, which will give us 3 radical 2. Again, we don't minus their radical, we just we put it back at the end. Now, if we were to have the square root of 20 minus 4 radical 5. Again, let's simplify the square root of 20. So we're going to do this as prime factors. So the prime factors of 20 would be 2 times 10. Then you're going to have 2 times 5. So our prime numbers factors are 2 times 2 times 5. So we're going to write the square root of 20 as a prime factor numbers. We should have 2 times 2 times 5 minus 4 the square root of 5. Again. We work with pairs, so we're going to take out our pairs from the prime numbers. So we're going to have the square root of 2 times 2 times the square root of 5 minus 4 times the square root of 5. Here, we have 2 times 2 under the radical, so we know that when we take the square root of this product, it will be 2, and then we're left with the, the square root of 5 because there's no pair, it's only one number, and it cannot be reduced any further. We'll leave it as it is. Just give us 2 times the square root of 5 minus 4 times the square root of 5. Here, these expressions both have the square root of 5 beside it, so we can minus their coefficient. So we're going to minus 4 from 2, which would give us negative. 2 times the square root of 5. And that would be our final.